Um, today, about 80% of US hospitals do not have electronic record system. That means that all your medical information go in paper, go to the doctor, and if you have gone recently, you will have noticed that the first thing that they give to you is a collection of forms that you're going to fill up with your writing. Then somebody's going to hopefully uh, transcribe those, those uh, forms. Mm. And then we essentially we're going to a folder in a cabinet. A cabinet and so on, that is a paper form. If uh, you need to go to a different doctor the next month, they are going to submit that form by fax to your second doctor. The healthcare industry is the only industry today that I'm aware of that still use fax machines. Everybody has moved on in electronic media. Um, now, because there was um, this um, awareness about the fact that adoption of electronic record systems will be one potential mechanism for um, reducing the, the high cost and low quality of healthcare, then the government, um, essentially starting about 10 years ago, uh, set aside um, a stimulus funding for driving the hospitals and the private practices to adopt electronic, electronic medical records. Um, they set aside $2 billion, um, and essentially the way it works is that if you, as a hospital, demonstrate that you're using an electronic, uh, electronic record system, then when you go to um, get rewards, you get better ratings in some of the rewards. And you also get direct payments from the center of Medicare. And the payments are in the range of $100,000 a year per doctor. So if you have a hospital with 100 doctors, you can get about $10 million of um, stimulus funding to combine, so to migrate to these electronic record systems. Now, um, what is an electronic record system is a matter of uh, debate and definition. So some hospitals uh, argue that if they have an, an Excel spreadsheet with a list of the patients, that is their electronic record system. And because that is probably not a satisfactory definition, then the government came up with something that was a little bit more <coughs> detailed and said, um, we are going to define more carefully what it means to have an electronic record system. And they come up with a, a list of uh, 70 or so items that says, well, you should be able to do things like prescribing uh, medication electronically. You should be able to uh, figure out what is the percentage of your patients that are smokers. <coughs> so those are very reasonable, uh, reasonable measures. Um, for a strange case of uh, the government doing something very reasonable. Now, what is interesting in this story is that the, the Department of Veteran Affairs, for many years, have had the best electronic record system that we know of. And it has been open source even better than open source in the strict uh, sense of things because this is developed by federal employees and therefore their work is in the public domain. So the VA has uh, a system called VISTA and they have been using it for about 30 years. The way VISTA was developed was actually by, as, as a grassroots effort by employees of the VA who simply needed to manage the information of their patients. So, uh, <coughs> There are several characteristics of the VA that make it very unique in the healthcare system. One of the, the most important ones is that when you're a patient of the VA, you're a patient for life. So you really, um, you get discharged from the military system, you uh, get conversations at the VA, but once you enter a VA hospital, they will um, be responsible for your health, healthcare and continue that. And therefore, they have the advantage, they have all the record and information since you enter the VA. They know all the medications that you have received, all the treatments that you have received, and if you move around the country, or sometimes uh, even around the world, they are able to find all your records. Now, for the rest of us who are outside of the VA, you probably have experienced that. You probably have one doctor this year. Next year, you change to another provider. Um, your next provider doesn't know anything about what happened to you before. And if they need to ask that question, the question is going to be answered via fax machine uh, at the speed of making the request and sending the information back. Uh, during all that time, VISTA has been working in a large collection of hospitals, 172 hospitals with the national VA system, and um, almost a thousand ambulatory care facilities. So this is a proven system that has been essentially developed on the ground by people who are very familiar with the medical system. So uh, VISTA, ironically, was not developed by software engineers, was mostly developed by nurses and doctors and pharmacists. Um, in the early days where you could actually get a computer from private track and, and hack it together. So it's a, an actual example of <coughs> open source development even before there was a the concept of open source. Um, M is the language in which this is written. Uh, most people will know M today and there is a 
Palo or Eastern Archive and all language. Um, the reality is that it's a language that was developed for that care and is very fine tuned for doing what you need to do in a healthcare system. So it may not be the most popular language. Um, many you know, young developers will not have any idea about what it is, but it is probably the best fitted language for this, for this process. This is not the only healthcare um, electronic record system written in M. Most of the proprietary systems that are coming in the market today are also written in M. Uh, so it's the system that the Department of Defense uses for all the hospitals. So when you look at the field, uh, in general, M is the expected language to use. In the same way that if you go to computational fluid dynamics, you would expect to find Fortran running in all those supercomputers. Even if Fortran may be old, that is what you would expect to find. That is basically because it, it fits the needs of that domain. Um, ironically, M is a, existed before SQL existed, so by definition, it's a no SQL database. Um, one of the interesting characteristics of uh, healthcare information is that it, it is all about abnormal events. So when you think about the kind of information that you put in a relational database, um, in order to organize a relational database, you have an expectation of the information that is coming in. So you have employees and salaries, and things that you can arrange in tables, uh, because you know what to expect. Well, in the space of information, what you put in healthcare is what is actually outside of this space of um, expected predictable events. So if you think about just what are all the possible reasons that we should maybe send to a hospital? Well, it's all possible and normal events. And it's very hard to summarize them in a list or put them in a table. Um, despite the fact that the healthcare industry actually have tried to do that, there is a list of, uh, it's called the IDC-10 um, dictionary, where they define all possible things that can happen to you that will result in you going to a hospital. And include things like um, being killed by a turtle. <laughs> Having a second encounter with that turtle. <laughs> being attacked by a um, non-venomous reptile and having a second encounter with a non-venomous reptile and so on. So um, you can imagine already the difficulty of coming up with all these possible things. Uh, plus the challenge that if you arrive to the hospital and the nurse have to look at you and say, uh, should I put this person as was killed by a turtle or was it the first time or the second time? And he has to search for that item in a list of uh, 10,000 entries that is, uh, what this dictionary has today. Um, you can picture the challenge. Um, it turns out that the, the people have, who have been studying this space for a long time uh, figure out that the nature of information in healthcare is less similar to relational databases and more similar to what the web is. When you think about the internet, um, you will not expect the internet to be organized in a relational database. Because it doesn't fit that nature. You have a network collection of links that are very regular and they are um, they have a, a higher richness of description than what you can put in tables. All right, so looking back at Vista, Vista has uh, about two and a half million lines of code. So it's a, it's a decent sized system. When you compare it to the Linux kernel, the Linux kernel have about uh, 10 million lines of code. Now, M language is a very concise language. It's a very compact one. So to make a fair representation, this problem is, if you could extend it and project it into what the uh, C language and express is probably larger uh, in size than the Linux kernel. In the software industry, we have this estimation that in order to take good care of a software um, package, you would need about one developer for every thousand lines of code. In the way we manage software in open source communities, meaning that you know, there would be um, five developers that work very intensively in the software, and then there are 200 developers that do one thing. And that's the only thing that they would ever do. So if you wanted to take care of uh, software uh, collection, you will need for Vista about 6,000 developers. And right now, uh, the VA is open sourcing Vista, is moving it outside of the internal development of the VA and creating an open source community around it. Um, by a presidential mandate, the Department of Defense is required to adopt uh, a joint uh, health record system with the VA. That means that in a matter of a couple of years, both the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense will have a joint electronic health record system that will be open source by requirement. And if that happens, this will be providing services to 18 million Americans, because it includes all the military personnel, all the veterans, and the families of the military personnel. Now, you can already picture that if the government went to the trouble of creating an open source electronic health record system, 
And 80% of the private hospitals in the US do not have one. And it will cost them millions of dollars to acquire one. It will make a lot of economic sense for them to embrace the open source one and join essentially a national open source system for electronic record system. So at, at this point, the, the main challenge is um, get the node people. We need these 6,000 developers to come out of universities, essentially. Um, when you look at open source projects, the large majority of the community is actually students. Because they are smart, they have the, the free time, um, they are the kind of um, elements that will not listen when you tell them that something is possible, and they will actually go and do it. And that's the kind of community that you need to keep this software system going on. So I guess the, the point of my talk is it's a call to embracing the education of young developers in the arcane M language. And accept that the fact that the GO is irrelevant because the reality is that this is the language that is running in the hospital. If you get first today and then to the hospital and they have to put your information in a computer, this is the language that is going to manage. The reality is, this is the, is the standard language for electronic medical systems. Um, this is OSERA, this is the Open Source Electronic Health Record Agent. This is the organization that the DA has set up together. Um, the DOD, the Department of Defense, is going to join this effort. And uh, a collection of communities, including the Indian Health Service, is also going to be part of this effort. What is Desperately missing at this point is young new developers learning this language, learning the system. Um, because the, the community of developers that have uh, participated in this project at the DA, most of them are in the uh, retirement age. So we are in, a, in this crisis situation where the, uh, this um, sophisticated knowledge of the system is at risk of being lost if we don't have a new generation of developers that join and uh, embrace the system. Right, and that's perfect. So that's, that's what I have. If you have any questions, I'm happy to. What's the difference between the M and the HL7? HL7 is a standard, it's a protocol. It's a standard for communications. And the purpose of HL7 is that if I'm a hospital and another um, doctor outside of the hospital needs to ask for your personal record, he will use the HL7 standard communication protocol to send me that question. And I will use the same protocol to answer the question. Um, so that's that's the protocol. So you could think of that. So it's like an XML kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, M would be if you think of terms of um, an Oracle database or a MySQL database, it would be the equivalent of the SQL language that you would use to talk to the database. So simply speaking, there are two things. There is M is both a language and a database. It provides the both both services. Any other questions? Is there, uh, is, is that framework, the M framework, or the GISTA framework, um, accessible to smaller practices? Or That's a big question. Um, not out of the box. So if you really grew up in a um, relatively large size hospital, there, there was an initiative at the VA to create something called VISTA office. It's actually very confusing. Vista, by the way, but um, it, it was related to what you So if you have a um, small practice of five doctors, um, Vista office would be a good fit for that uh, smaller set. So there is there's an option to adapt it to that system. There's also an interest in um, implementing electronic record systems as the, in the way that you will implement utilities in a city. So, in the same way that you think about power and water and services, you can think of institutions that deliver or offer electronic record systems for a community that may include all the small practices in that community and the doctors and medical imaging facilities and so on. But the, the practical reality is that if you get sick today, you go to your primary care physician, then you go to the nearest hospital, and then you may be you know, bouncing back and forth between multiple institutions, and none of them has your full record. Is that it? Thank you. Okay. Thank you.